Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM22 story, Rebuilding Helsingborg, with me, Daniel. We're back today for part 7, and we're almost back to start season 2. But as we mentioned last time out, after a successful first season in Swedish football, we're back in the top tier, but we don't yet get to make our top flight debut. That's because we've got the Swedish Cup group stage and we start with the toughest test about. Malmo in a derby, two of the biggest sides traditionally in the country. This is going to be a real test of how good our season in the top flight is going to be. If we can get a win, maybe the signs are hopeful. But if we get put to the sword, it could be back to the drawing board. So if you're looking forward to seeing how we get on, as well as what's been going on in the summer transfer window so far... Not too much action, but I still definitely feel we've improved the side. Then please do put a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content. We've got the Hemel save back tomorrow. That one's up in the eye above. Yesterday's episode was huge. Please do check it out if you haven't already. There's also links up there to the head coach playlist, the football podcast, the Twitch channel and the merchandise store too. And you can support the show as a channel member by clicking the join button down below. But thank you as always for your incredible support as we move into season two in Swedish football with Helsingborg. We won promotion the first season, we ticked our objective, but what are we going to achieve this year? Well, interestingly, maybe not that much because the board only expects us to avoid relegation. I don't really know how much to read into that. We've had an election, we've had a new chairperson coming in, but not much has changed in terms of expectation. We've not been able to do a huge amount in a transfer window, but the bits we have done, I still feel, are going to be useful this season. We've also got some bits pre-arranged for the future, our director of football looking forward on this front, but let's see the ones that have come in already and get prepared for a very big season. Because if we start with the transfers, there's not much going on at the moment. One youngster may be going out on loan to a third tier side, Acropolis, the team that were rooted to the bottom last season in our division. But then... The one that might be coming in was an interesting one. I had nothing to do with this. Director of football found him, bid for him and agreed it. Joining on the 15th of July is Nemanja Tosic from Kukariki over in Serbia. He's a 25-year-old, three-and-a-half star ability left back. He's definitely an upgrade on Davidson and he's 30 years of age. So looking forward, this is probably our first choice for the future. It also means then if we find another upgrade, we can sell Davidson. Or we've got two very strong options for now anyway. I have bought in a temporary backup solution for Davidson just to get us through to the summer. But this guy with good natural fitness, with height of fullback, with good technical ability, I feel he could be a real star for us moving forward. And you can see he's been playing European football too. So looking forward to having him at the club. But let's worry about the ones that are already here. So if we go to the transfer history, let's start with the outs. And that begins with one player who's released from the club, Matar Kar. He wanted to triple his wage. He's 26. Look, he did a solid job for us as a backup. Made five league appearances, one cup one as well. For 150 or quid a week, it was a decent signing. I think he cost, was it 975 quid? We can't complain too much, but not good enough for our level. He has now gone to join a Swedish fourth tier club which probably shows you how good he is. So Matar Kar is on his way out, but did a job for us when needed. Now let's go and have a look at the actual transfers, the ins and outs of this football club. So was there anything at the end of last year? There wasn't, just the returning of Benjamin Aquart from loan. Let's look at the five that have left and the four that have come in. And we've made a little bit of a profit so far. All of the transfer fees, both in and out, so far for right backs. Don't know what we want to read into that. But let's look at the outs. We've got Asad Al Hamlawi, who was that fourth choice striker, with Karjalainen coming back, even with Aqua coming back as an attacking midfielder who's stronger. I feel like it was easier to let him out to get some football. He goes to Joan Kapins in the second tier, who did really well last year, and he'll be first choice there because he's a good footballer. He's a good target man, doesn't really suit our style, and I'm sure there he'll maybe develop a little bit more. But has done well for us when he played, in fairness. Ravi Zuka has been pushing his way out for a while. He's gone to Mialbi in a second tier as well. We got about 60 grand for him, which at 27 for a backup player isn't the worst. It's a shame to lose someone with great natural fitness, but a defender who's not even six foot, you know, it's not my cup of tea this year. So he's gone off as well. Victor Blix has then gone to the same club on loan. I'll be keeping an eye on him to see how much he plays. I'm hoping they'll play him as a right winger because he came back from his loan as a three-star ability player. He's not quite got the tackle him to be a defender, 
and he's not quite got the quality to break into our starting team as a winger because we've got Lerpo, who's absolutely brilliant. So the idea is that we loan him out for this year. We hopefully give him an opportunity to play some more. Then he can come back next year, be a real star for us, and maybe be able to break into the first team. Interestingly, he's lost his model citizen personality to fairly loyal, which seems a little bit of a, a downgrade, but he's got big potential. He's a super player, and I hope he gets some more football as the season goes on. Next up is just a youngster. Nils Havanep has gone on loan. He's not going to make it here. We could have sold him, but we got a loan offer, so off he goes. And then Matteo Comare, who you may remember, came in in July of last year. He's gone for £30,000. We were on the verge of loaning him out. He's got potential, the kid, but when you sign someone for free who's not in your first team plans and who probably isn't going to make it, to then get an offer of thirty grand just a few months later, it seems silly not to do it. So he's going out. He's got a slight sell-on clause as well. And I just feel like it was too good to refuse. So Matteo Comare, a short stay, but a very fruitful one for our bank balance. With that done though, let's move on to the four ins. And it's just been about bolstering the squad on a budget. I'm not going to go mad this season about trying to win the league or compete at the top. We know we're going to have to do that in instalments. We're going to have to fix the financial situation first, which the improved TV deal in this league will help. But let's start with Nahom Germay Netabay. Hopefully I've pronounced that right. He's a 27-year-old Eritrea international. He's a centre midfielder, a number 10. He can play off both wings as well. Gives us a little bit of natural balance being a left footer. And he's also a very decent player. So I'm looking at him as a good squad addition. You saw we were a little short in centre midfield last year. Kanto came in occasionally. We didn't really have a huge amount beyond the first team. And I wanted to make sure that was fixed this time. And having someone versatile who can give us natural left-sidedness on the occasions we need it to. I feel like it was a good move. So probably only going to be here for the year that we've signed him for. He's not got a long contract. But for the first season back at this level, having a stronger squad is certainly going to help us. He was joined a couple of weeks later by our short-term left-back solution, Samuel Froge. And I'm going to apologise for the pronunciation on that one. He's not great. He's similar to Lucas Rerza, who we had on loan last year. But 160 quid a week can probably go out on loan after these six months. And in fact, let me just promote him from the reserves for now. He's going to be our backup until we sign Terzic in the summer. And then we'll loan him out for the rest of the year. But Solid Pro was available on a free. Actually spotted through the trial day, incidentally. And he's going to be here for the next few months. Next up, we've got Johan Valencia. And he is probably the pick of the bunch. Three and a half star ability, holding mid and centre midfielder. Less than a thousand pound a week. We got him on a free. He's now worth nearly a million quid. He's a superstar. We've got to bear in mind that he's very strong defensively. He's not the tallest, but can maybe rat around as a box-to-box -box midfielder. Perhaps got the ability technically to be a centre midfielder too. And he can also cover at right back if we're desperate. So versatile, strong, likes to dictate the tempo, likes to get on the ball and try and make things happen. I feel like he's going to be a superstar for us. And at three and a half star ability, still with a bit more potential at 25, I could see him being a stalwart for the next years to come. Finally, we pay a transfer fee though. Gustav Granaf is the final sign-in prior to the cup games. He comes in from Degafors for £80,000. And he is a right-back replacement for Zuka and will be better than Langren, who's out injured anyway. He is a right-back and a centre-half, six foot three, good technically, very good physically, decent enough going forward, can take a corner and a long throw, which we haven't had in this save yet, and can also play wing-back if we look to that further down the line. Got loads of first-team football under his belt at the second-tier level. Let's see where else he's been playing. So, Swedish Premiership last season he was in. And the year before that, he was in the first division elite. So he's played a lot of football in the top two tiers. Really good player. Maybe a centre half later down the line. But at the moment, we need a right back. And to have someone with the long flat bullet throw could add a little string to our bow this season. Particularly given Vidal and Lerpa's aerial prowess. So I'm really happy with that deal. He's a good signing made great by his traits. But hopefully he'll be able to deliver some set pieces this year. For now though, that's only a small upgrade to the squad. We've not done a huge amount of work. It will probably happen over the rest of this window, which has still got two months to go. It only opened about 30 days ago. And we'll also look over the summer and the next winter. Because realistically, with most of the leagues playing summer to summer, 
that's when we're going to find a lot of our free agents, particularly the ones from England who we'll probably know about, as will Grangvist, who keeps scouting them. But for a director of football, he's popped up with some really good sign-ins there. The only one that I found was the young left-back who came in from the trial day, and I got the director of football to get him in. I negotiated the deal for Valencia after he rejected the initial one, but the director of football found the player. And the last sign-in was basically all done by the director of football. So you've got to praise him. He's finding good players. He's making sure the squad upgrades are where we need them and are good players. And it leaves us with a squad that I'm confident can keep us up without knowing too much about the rest of the league. The dynamics are looking really good. The managerial support is now on board. But let's have a look at what the media expect ahead of our first Premiership season. Because if we have a look at the Swedish top tier season preview, we are expected to be in mid-table. Varnamo the favourites to go down. But we're not too bad there. There are some sides that are much better than us. And if you look at the top of the division, so the key players... Anders Christensen is a superstar. Nurk have been won the league last year. They've got a top quality striker. They've also got Emma Markovic, who is a lovely, tricky winger. They've got bigger budgets than us. They're spending a bit more money. Even if we look at the transfers this year, there's clubs that are spending the best part of a million pound on players. And actually, it's probably Malmo who are getting weaker, if anything, of the big sides. But I'm not sure it's going to be a year where we compete at the top. I think it's going to be one where we settle in. And then maybe next year we can start to push on. But as long as we stay up, we've done our job. Let's have a look at the squads because we have got some injury concerns. Davidson at left back out for two to five weeks. Langren out for three to six. I'm almost tempted with the Davidson injury to bring in the other left back now. But I'm not sure that that's worth the money. Given there's only a few months to the summer window. But there is a, a flip side to this, which is if we have a look at the schedule... We talked about how light the match load was in the second tier last year. One game a week, nothing else. And for the most part, that's still the case in the Swedish Prem this season. But look at the first month. What on earth is going on there? We've got a game every three days and then suddenly one game a week. And in some cases, a game every two or three weeks for the next month after that. It doesn't seem sensibly scheduled, but I'm sure there's a good reason for it. So actually having looked at that now, Let's see how much we can buy Tursic for immediately, or if we even can to start with. Because he is going to be £30,000. I'm just going to do that. In he comes. Has he joined the club before this game? Because that would be a massive boost. We'll get Johnson to welcome him. He's still three and a half star ability, although the assistant manager's put him level with Davidson. But he's the best left back who's fit. He's another very good one. And that bodes very well for the season ahead. So we've got ourselves a fifth sign in. We've now spent over a hundred grand and we've got a big game against Malmo to come. And this one, given the other two teams in the group, probably decides who goes through in the cup. So let's get through to the first game at home to Malmo. Through the tactical meeting, we've got a new team to pick. And I'll be back in a moment to run through the 11 as we've got over 10,000 through the gate to see us face the old rival. Well, here we go. It is safe to say that we have spent more time setting up our long throws than we have setting up our theme. Most of the rest hasn't changed. And to be fair, bar the fullbacks, I think it's the same team as last year. We have got a few dilemmas moving through the season. Lindegaard or Jolson as the keeper, that's going to be a moving situation. I'd imagine Valencia will break into the midfield eventually. But for now, we're sticking with the tried and trusted by the two essential changes. So Lindegaard's in goal. We've got Granath with the long flat throw at right back. Tersic making his debut on the left. Weyberg and Vidal at centre half. How many goals will Vidal get from the long throws? Almajed, Hendrickson and Lingman, the three in midfield. With Lerpa, Ali and Vandenhoek, the front three. I'm really excited for this. Malmo, one of the best sides in the country. I'm not almost expecting to win. But if we can get a good performance, if we can be competitive, it'll give me an awful lot of confidence for the season. How strong they're going to go in this cup, I don't know though. So let's get into the first game of the season and find out how we get on in the Swedish Cup. Well, plenty of squad numbers handed out and some big names in this Malmo team. I didn't realise I was going to recognise so many. Nudson at left back I recognise. Ola Toivonen up front is a big name in European football over the years. Joe Inge Berger. Was he at Cardiff? I feel like he was somewhere in England. Was that in the Solskjaer era? I'm going to have to go and have a look. If we have a look at their side, Ola Toivonen doesn't need an introduction. Yes, he's 35 now, but he's still got quality. If we look at Joe Inge Berge, was it Cardiff? Where was he? He's played for Celtic. It was Cardiff, I remember him from. 
He's a very good footballer of 31 with be four and a half star ability in our team. That tells you how far behind we are. Knudsen at left back, I think an Ipswich. It was Ipswich, 148 games for them. Another man with a long throw as well, and it's far better than ours. That's the level we've got to aspire to. They're earning four or five grand a week each. They're big names, they're on big money, and we can't afford to compete with that. So we're paying a maximum of a third of what they are. That suggests how much worse our team probably is. Let's get into the first half, though. One complacent, one nervous, and one motivated. It's a little bit of a mixed bag, isn't it, with the new boys? But let's get through the tunnel interview into the first half and hope the battle of the long throws is won by Helsingborg. Well, early doors, we've got defending to do as Malmo are in possession. I would imagine, to be fair, that we're going to lose this game. This is a much better side than us. It's not a level we're yet going to be competing at. And I think looking at their side, you can dispel any sort of suggestion that we might come up and fly and win the league or something. There are sides here that are much better than us. It is going to come down to consistency. We saw that last season with other sides that were good. But for now, it's just about staying up, staying comfortable and competing against these sides. As we see the first long throw from Granaf. Jeez, it's massive. But it's straight into the arms of Darlin. And that's not really what we want from it. It was almost too long to beat the men at the near post. But the clearance is long towards Fidel who intercepts. Either he got back very quickly or the routine I set up isn't being followed. I'm not sure which it is. Granaf at right back is on a booking. So we're going to have to watch out for that. Just plays back to his keeper Lindegaard and Weyberg. We're starting with the experience in goal, but Jolson will probably get more game time this year. As Taha Ali plays through to Vanden Herk. can we take the lead? We can't. We've been outplayed for 25 minutes, but a long throw and a one-on-one -on -one have almost given us a chance to take the lead. As Lingman puts the corner in, outswinger to the back post, and we haven't got that big aerial advantage this year. Toivon and able to beat Vidal, and it's headed away. It stays nil-nil though. And we're competing pretty well in this game. For Malmo's dominance early, they didn't have a shot on target. But they have now got a long throw themselves. It's a big one. Vidal heads away. Only as far as Peña. Lingman hoofs downfield. Only as far as Moisander. And it's a little bit of a barrage of attacks. As Nudson gets it to Reeks on the left-hand side. Chance to beat his man. Does just that. Cuts it inside to Peña. Back to Reeks again. Into Berge at the back stick. And he's unfortunate. It beats the keeper, but not the near post. And it's cleared away by Tosic. It stays nil-nil. And at half-time, I would have taken that. We've had the only shots on target of the game, albeit they've hit the post. And we're really competing against one of the best sides in the league. So hopefully, it's a good sign for the rest of the season. As we've got a free kick on the right with Granat early in the second half. Hendrickson plays wide to Lerper. Chance to cross. It's well over hit. But Ali keeps it in on the left-hand side. Cuts into Lingman. Across the box to Lerper. Header straight at Darlin. It was a really good little move that, saved by Tahar Ali and he got the ball back in, but we're not able to take the lead. The expected goals is over one though, and at the hour mark we'll start to think of changes. This season, incidentally, down to three substitutions again, so no more of the five subs, it's going to be harder to rotate the squad. But hopefully we can keep people fit, particularly with three games a week. As Toivonen's in, it's a good save from Lindegaard. Two very experienced men coming head to head there, but our keeper... Is coming out on top. Let's go and make some changes. Some debuts need to be had. Almajed in a holding role. Replaced by Johan Valencia. He's an absolute superstar in the making. We've got to be aware as well. On a separate note of Jakob Persson. 21 year old Swedish defender. Come back from that year long injury. He's going to get some football later in the group stages. I'm looking into midfield. Thinking do I bring Netabay on? Is it the time for him? I think it is. Lingman will come off and let Netta Bay on. Johnson obviously is going to be involved more as well. And do I make the sub up front just yet? No. We're going to give it five more minutes. 25 to go. A really good performance so far. As we've got the ball at the back with Charlie Weyberg who finds Vidal. He can play out to Hendrickson. Can we create that goal? Can we get the lead? If Andon Herks in from a long ball, he's forced left. He goes a little wide and it's behind for a corner. He's wasting chances now, so I'm going to bring on Karjalainen. Hopefully it gives us more of an aerial threat too, but it also gives us a chance to take those opportunities in behind. It's a corner kick on the left-hand side. We'll be taken right-footed, but we don't even get to see it. I get the feeling this is going to end in a draw, and given the fact we're playing one of the best sides, we should be pleased. But the way we're dominating the game, I'm actually a bit frustrated. As Hendrickson gets down the right, his cross is headed away as far as Lerper. He cuts inside, shoots from distance! What a finish that is from Wilhelm Lerper. 
We've seen him score a lot of goals at the back post, particularly with his big aerial threat. But that is an absolute rocket from 25 yards. Off the underside of the bar, the keeper had no chance. And now we're moments away from time wasting. Although it's a free kick from Malmo. Levicki hits the post. And then he puts his rebound in. But it's disallowed for offside. We've got a minute and a half plus stoppages to go. And I will make no apologies for the fact that we're going time wasting. And we're going to cling on for a 1-0. Because with two lower league opponents left in the groups. Winning this game would almost certainly send us through. Maybe we are going to be competing at the top this season. Who knows. I'm not sure our squad's strong enough to do it two games a week, but we're going to be more disciplined. We're going to put the time wasting on. And what if we could have a cup run instead? That might work out. Hold our shape when we win possession. And we're not going to prevent the keeper. We're going to drop the line of engagement. We are going to make sure that at the end of this game, we have got a 1-0 victory. Hopefully, we can cling on for it. With four minutes stoppage time, we've been the better side. We've deserved the win. And we've got the win. First game back in front of 10,000. It's a cup game, albeit rather than a league one. Kasper Vidal, man of the match. Willem Lerper with a screamer. And some debutants at fullback looking very, very solid. So let's tell the lads they've done really well there. We had two of the same team talk there. But let's get through to the schedule. See when our first league game is and when we're going to be back for that. Well, four debutants, two starters, two off the bench, all of them looking pretty good. And as I've said before, it's not about signing lots of players, it's about signing good players. And I feel that the director of football, hands up to him, has managed to do that here. He is improving the staffing team as well. It's gradually expanding, particularly on the reserves front. So we are building towards being a top tier side. And we've got lots of scouts coming in as well, which is just going to speed that recruitment up in the future. Let's have a look at the schedule though, because we've got these two games in the cup. I'm not sure when the games are after that, the quarters and semis. So we might be back for one of those in the meantime. But if not, it will definitely be Degafors on the first day of the league season. Of course, we signed the right back Granaf from there. He's going to be a big weapon for us with that long throw. I'm looking forward to seeing him against his former club as we start a hectic schedule at the start of the league season in April. Let me know in the comments if you follow the Swedish league. Is this normal? A month of chaos followed by a very spaced out fixture list? Or is this something just because of the pandemic or because of FM? Let me know that one in the comments. If you did enjoy this episode though, some really good signings in the transfer window so far and a big 1-0 win against Malmo. Ugly, hard fought and really enjoyable. Then please do put a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content from two long-term stories. We'll be back with Hemel Hempstead tomorrow for our end of season review. Please do make sure you've seen yesterday's episode if you haven't already. It's up in the eye above. There's also links there to the head coach, the Twitch channel, the football podcast and the merchandise store. But above my head now is yesterday's Hemel video. I hope you enjoy that one in the meantime. And I'll see you back here for our first game in Sweden's top flight in just a couple of days time. More transfer news hopefully too. Yeah.